day and thank you for joining us today again. Open Heavens is written by our Father and the Lord, Pastor E. A. Adeboe, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And this commentary intends to bring insights to God's Word by the help of the Holy Spirit. Today's date is Tuesday, the 22nd day of August 2023, and our topic for today is When God Calls You, Part 2. Let us pray. Our dear loving and kind Father, we want to worship and appreciate your name. We want to thank you for the gift of life that we have. We want to thank you and appreciate you because you keep and guide us. You provide for us every day, free of charge. Thank you for the breath in our nostrils. Thank you for sound health. Thank you for sound mind. Thank you for the privilege to come before you again in worship. As we seek your face today, we ask, O Lord, that your word would come to us again to enlighten us and to grant us spiritual illumination. Open our eyes to understand and grant our hearts the grace also to obey all that you will teach us today. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jehovah, come back. Our memory verse for today is from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. 2 Timothy 1 verse 9 reads, Who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. And our text for today is from the book of 1 Peter chapter 4 from verse 7 to 11. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 7 to 11 reads, But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 4 from verse 7 to 11. God bless the reading of his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jehovah, come back. Once again, our topic for today is When God Calls, part 2. And in the body of today's devotional, our Father in the Lord says to us that, after God has called you to salvation, the next call is to join him in redeeming the world. Now, you must note that he doesn't only call people from the altar, but from all walks of life to serve him in various capacities. For example, he can call some to join him in the technology field because he wants to use technology as a tool to reach the unsaved. His agenda goes beyond the altar into the everyday lives of people. God is not a Sunday Sunday God. He is God every single day. And so he is using people to accomplish his agenda daily. Pastors don't reserve the right to be used by God. As far as you are born again, whether you are in business, arts and entertainment, or even in fashion, God can use you in that field to fulfill his will. He said in Colossians chapter 3 verse 17, And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Thus, whatever it is that you do, make sure you are doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. When you do something in the name of someone, it means it is not you but the fellow being represented that's doing it. In other words, when God calls you to an industry, you are not to go there to do your will but His. His agenda is already set. All He does when He calls you is to join Him in bringing it to pass. Thus, when you feel Him pulling you to work for Him in a certain field of life, then you must ask Him what His agenda is concerning that thing you are to do. Everything you do must be in line with his agenda. You should also note that you are his representative there and you must not do what he himself wouldn't. As a reward for answering the call to join him in his redemptive work in the world, 
God makes sure that all things work together for your good. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 reads, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Once you are called according to his purpose and you answer that call, all things will begin to work together for your good. God bless his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Once again, our topic for today is When God Calls You, Part 2. Yesterday, we saw the part 1 of this topic, and from that study, we learned that the call of God is twofold. And yesterday, we saw the first part of that call, which was the call to leave our sinful ways and to come to Him in repentance for salvation. We were told that this is the very first call that every man will receive. We learned from that study that after we come to him, God expects us to follow him in holiness. And failure to do so, we learned that he would spew us out of his mouth, meaning that he would reject us completely. We learned also that if we continue willingly in sin, while claiming to be his children, the Lord would not recognize and acknowledge us as his children. Hallelujah! Today we have before us the second part of the topic, which is when God calls you, part 2. And today we would be considering the second part to the call of God. In today's study, our Father and the Lord explains to us that after God has called you to salvation, the next call is to join Him in redeeming the world. Scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation so we can see that we have been saved to save others. This means that it would be wrong for us to receive salvation and then remain quiet about such great gift of God that has the power to save others also and to bring them to Him. And this duty that has been committed into our hands, we are made to understand in today's study, is to all men. Our Father in the Lord tells us in today's study that God does not only call people from the altar, he says that he calls them from all walks of life to serve him in various capacities. At this point, I would like to mention that irrespective of what you do, God has interest in you and he wants to use you in that particular field to be a shining light and to bring many to his saving knowledge. You may be a teacher. That access you have to school children is such a great opportunity that the Lord has given to you. Do not mismanage it. You may be a trader in the market. That store of yours is your pulpit. As men come to buy from you, remember that their greatest need is not just what they've come to buy, but the need for salvation. So while you sell to them, also give to them the gift of God. Offer them salvation, this great gift that many of them are still unaware of their need for. We're also told in our study today, that pastors don't reserve the right to be used by God. This means that you don't necessarily have to wait until you are an ordained pastor or a minister before you engage in the assignments God has given unto you. You can be just a brother or a sister who is born again, spirit-filled and doing exploits for the Lord. We are also reminded in today's study that whatever we do, we must ensure to do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is because we are his representatives, we are ambassadors of Christ. Hence, we are admonished today to ensure that we never do anything that we know he would not do himself. It is important to state at this point that in today's world, we are the Bibles that people read. People are no longer interested in the kind of Christianity that says, do as I say and not do as I do. They want to see it play out practically from your life. They want you to practice what you preach. They want your life to be a testimony that what you are bringing to them is true and that it actually works. We are also made to understand in today's study that when God calls you into an industry, you are to go there to do His will. We also learn that it is important to ask the Lord what His agenda is for where He has placed us. That is because everything we must do must be in line with His agenda. In that office of yours, ask the Lord, Lord, what would you have me do in this space? In that political appointment where the Lord has placed you, ask him, Lord, what would you have me do? In that position as the chief executive, always have in mind that he placed you there for his purposes to be accomplished. So ask him, say, Lord, 
How can I be your ambassador? How can I represent you well? We are told today that his agenda is already set. In other words, before the beginning of time, he already had these things planned out. What we must do is to plug into his plan and his agenda to become tools and instruments that would bring about their fulfillment. Hallelujah! When we do this and we make ourselves available to his plans and his purposes, we are told in today's study that all things would work together for our good. This is irrespective of whether or not we understand what God is working out in our lives and through our lives. Wait until you see the finished product and you would know that he had the best in mind for you all the while. He would never disappoint you. I would like us at this point to bow our heads and appreciate the Lord for the privilege to be a part of his plans and his purposes. I appreciate him for the privilege to be a part of what he is doing in these times. I appreciate him for the privilege to be instruments to bring about the salvation of others. Give him all the thanks in Jesus' name. Now ask the Lord today, say, Father, grant me the grace to walk in your plans and your purposes for me in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord today for that grace that would enable us to be kingdom ambassadors and representatives everywhere we find ourselves. Ask the Lord today, say, Father, wherever it is that you have placed me, grant me the grace to maximize it to see men come into your knowledge in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord, say, Father, help me to remain at my duty post. Help me to be a mobile pulpit, winning and redeeming men back to you in the name of Jesus. Also ask the Lord today for the grace to do away with every of our own plans and agenda and to ensure that it is only his kingdom come that would be established in our lives and through our lives in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord today for the grace to seek him first in the name of Jesus. Also ask the Lord today, say, Father, according to your word, as we submit ourselves to following your plans and your purposes for us, let all things work together for good. Let our lives be full of your testimonies, signs and wonders, and let us sing of your praises. Thank you, our dear Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Everlasting King of glory, we give you thanks and we bless your name. Thank you for the privilege to be called by you and to be instruments for the salvation of many others. We ask, O oh Lord, that the grace to be new, sharp, threshing instruments that would bring in great harvest into your kingdom, you'd grant unto us today. Thank you, our dear Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have a key point in our study today that tells us, God called you to that industry to do His will. Represent Him well. We receive the grace today to be true ambassadors and representatives of the Lord Almighty wherever he places us in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. We have in our Bible in one year reading plan for today to read from the book of Lamentations chapter 1 down to chapter 2. We also want to thank you and appreciate you for joining us today. We know and we believe that you have been blessed. If you'd love to speak to someone or to receive updates like this sent to you daily, please do well to send a WhatsApp or Telegram message to plus 234-80-986-11. 226. Do well also to like, share, comment and subscribe to our various platforms available. Our hymn for today is the hymn 7 of our Open Heavens devotional. We would be singing, I am thine, O Lord. Have a lovely day ahead. See you tomorrow again by God's grace. God bless you and bye for now.
pray.